we will explore 19 powerful psychological tips that will empower you to decipher body language, verbal cues, and subtle expressions. Mastering these techniques in business, relationships, or everyday encounters will undoubtedly enhance your interpersonal skills and enrich your understanding of the human mind. Get ready to unravel the secrets behind perceptive reading and embark on an exciting journey toward greater emotional intelligence. Tip number one, micro expressions. Have you ever caught someone making a quick facial expression that disappeared in a blink? That's a micro expression. Lasting just for a fraction of a second, they reveal a person's true feelings, like emotions trying to escape through their face. These genuine and involuntary expressions can give away what someone's thinking or feeling, even when they're trying to hide it. For instance, you might see a hint of sadness or fear in their eyes while they smile. Being attentive and quick on the uptake is key to recognizing these brief flashes of truth. Practice reading micro-expressions, and you'll gain incredible insights into people's emotions and intentions. You can also learn to control your micro-expressions for more authentic communication and stronger connections. Tip number two, eye contact and pupil dilation. Maintaining eye contact shows someone is present and genuinely interested in the conversation. It creates a sense of connection and trust. When we're excited or emotionally charged, our pupils dilate, getting bigger. Picture this during a conversation, you notice someone's pupils getting larger as they talk about something they're passionate about. It's like their eyes are lighting up with enthusiasm. On the other hand, if they feel stressed or uncomfortable, their pupils might constrict a bit. This isn't magic. It's science. Pupil dilation is an automatic response tied to our emotions. And guess what? You can use this knowledge to read people better. Tip number three, body language clusters. Body language clusters are those subtle combinations of cues that reveal much about what's happening in someone's mind. Instead of focusing on one gesture, it's about looking at the bigger picture. It's like solving a puzzle. When you see multiple body cues happening simultaneously, you understand their feelings or thoughts. If someone's crossing their arms, fidgeting, and avoiding eye contact, it might suggest they're feeling defensive or uncomfortable. Their body gives away hints of their true emotions, even if they try to hide it. Decoding body language clusters isn't about being a detective, it's about understanding people and improving communication. Our body language speaks volumes, sometimes more than our words. Be attentive and observe body language in different situations. Tip number four, tone of voice and speech patterns. Have you ever noticed how someone's tone changes when they're excited, angry, or sad? When someone's thrilled about something, you can hear that excitement in their voice. It's infectious. Conversely, if someone's upset or irritated, their tone might become sharper or more tense. Their emotions are bubbling up and being expressed through their speech. Even the slightest changes in tone can give you clues about their feelings. But it's not just about the overall tone, it's also about the patterns in their speech. Some people might talk fast when nervous or eager, while others might slow down when uncertain or thoughtful. When you're having a conversation, try mirroring their tone and speech patterns. These patterns can tell you a lot about their state of mind. And you know what's super cool? You can use this knowledge to connect better with others. It's like a subtle way of saying, hey, I understand you, and I'm on the same page. When you communicate authentically, it helps others feel more comfortable around you. Tip number five, cultural awareness. Cultural awareness is about understanding and respecting how people express themselves non-verbally. You see, different cultures have unique gestures, facial expressions, and body language. Being aware of these differences can make a world of difference in our interactions. Have you ever been in a situation where you thought someone was rude or distant, but it turned out to be a cultural thing? It helps us avoid misinterpreting signals and prevents misunderstandings. For example, in some cultures, direct eye contact is a sign of respect and attentiveness. In others, it might be considered rude or confrontational. So. When interacting with people from different cultural backgrounds, we must be mindful of these nuances. One way to enhance our cultural awareness is by observing and learning from others. 
Pay attention to how people from various cultures use body language and facial expressions. Tip number six, verbal cues and word choices. Have you ever noticed how the way someone speaks can reveal so much about them? It's like their words are little clues to their inner world. So, here's the deal. When conversing with someone, pay close attention to their choice of words. Certain words can indicate their emotions, beliefs, or even their level of confidence. For example, if someone says, I'm thrilled, they're genuinely excited about something. But it's not just about individual words, it's also about their overall language. Their speaking style, tone, and even the pace of their speech can provide hints about what's going on in their mind. If someone consistently uses positive words and expressions, it might mean feeling good and optimistic. On the other hand, if they're using negative language, it could indicate some underlying worries or concerns. Interpreting verbal cues and word choices requires some detective work. It's not about jumping to conclusions but rather piecing together the puzzle of their communication to better understand their emotions and intentions. So, the next time you're conversing, listen closely to their words and how they say them. Tip number 7. Emotional leakage. Have you ever noticed how sometimes people unintentionally reveal their true emotions? Their feelings are leaking out, even if they're trying to keep a lid on them. That's what we call emotional leakage, and it's pretty fascinating. You know those moments when someone says something, but their facial expression or body language doesn't match their words? Their emotions are peeking through the cracks, and we can see what they feel. For example, imagine you're conversing with a friend, and they say they're fine, but you notice a little furrow in their brow or a brief moment of sadness in their eyes. That's emotional leakage right there. Their true emotions are seeping out, we can pick up on those subtle cues. Emotional leakage is often unconscious, so the person might not even be aware that they're showing the true feelings. It's like their emotions betray them. We're the emotion detectives trying to piece the puzzle together. Tip number 8. Empathy and emotional intelligence. These are like the secret ingredients to understanding others on a whole new level. Empathy is all about putting yourself in someone else's shoes trying to understand what they're going through, and showing genuine compassion. Imagine this, you're talking to a friend going through a tough time. Instead of just nodding or giving advice immediately, you try to feel what they're feeling. It's like you're opening your heart to their emotions and offering them a safe space to express themselves. Empathy is a superpower because it helps us connect with others in a way that makes them feel truly heard and supported. And you know what? It's not about fixing their problems, it's about being there for them, listening, and showing that you care. Now, emotional intelligence is like empathy's best friend. It's about awareness of our emotions and understanding how they impact our thoughts and behavior. When emotionally intelligent, we can also accurately recognize and interpret other people's emotions. Tip number 9. Contextual inconsistencies. Have you ever been in a situation where someone's words just don't seem to match their actions or the environment they're in? Contextual inconsistencies happen when there's a mismatch between what someone is saying and their situation. For example, they might say they're totally fine, but their body language or facial expressions show signs of discomfort. Now, there could be various reasons for these inconsistencies. Maybe they're feeling nervous or anxious in the current situation, affecting how they express themselves. Or perhaps they're trying to hide their true emotions, but those little non-verbal cues slip out unintentionally. Tip number 10. Baseline behavior. Baseline behavior is like setting a foundation for understanding someone's usual behavior, their norm. Think about it this way. We all have unique ways of expressing ourselves, our typical mannerisms, and reactions. Baseline behavior is about observing someone in different situations, like how they act with friends, family, or professional settings. This way, you get a sense of the usual communication and behavior style. Once you've established their baseline, you can spot deviations from it. It's like having a reference point to compare with. If you notice changes in how they act or respond, it could be a clue that something's up. For example, imagine your friend is usually super bubbly and talkative, but suddenly they become quiet and withdrawn. That might signal that something's bothering them, even if they're not saying it outright. Tip number 11. Emotion regulation. Have you ever had those moments when you felt upset or anxious? but you tried to hide it and put on a brave face. That's emotion regulation in action. See, emotion regulation is all about how we manage and express our emotions, especially in social situations. 
Sometimes, we need to control our emotions to fit in with the group or maintain a sense of professionalism. Other times, we should avoid showing vulnerability or keep certain feelings to ourselves. For instance, imagine you're at work, and something frustrating happens. You might feel like yelling or expressing your anger, but instead, you take a deep breath and put on a calm demeanor. That's you regulating your emotions to avoid causing tension in the workplace. Now, some people are good at masking their emotions. They might be going through a tough time, but you'd never know because they've mastered the art of emotion regulation. On the other hand, some of us wear our hearts on our sleeves, and our emotions are pretty transparent to others. Understanding emotion regulation is crucial when reading people. It helps us see beyond what they're showing on the surface. When someone is trying to manage their emotions, they might show subtle signs of discomfort or unease. It's like a little crack in the facade, revealing their true feelings. It can also involve amplifying positive emotions to create a certain impression. Let's say you're really excited about a project, and you make sure your enthusiasm shines through during a presentation. It's a way of connecting with your audience and showing them you're genuinely invested. So, the next time you're conversing with someone, pay attention to how they're regulating their emotions. Tip number 12, personal space. Some people like to keep a bit more distance during conversations, while others are more comfortable being up close and personal. Personal space can vary depending on the culture and the relationship between people. We may not mind being closer to close friends and family, but we prefer a bit more distance from acquaintances or strangers. So, when engaging with someone, they must be aware of their personal space boundaries. They might feel uneasy or uncomfortable if you invade their bubble without realizing it. On the other hand, if you keep too much distance when they expect closeness, it might come across as distant or disinterested. You don't need a measuring tape to figure this out. Just pay attention to their body language and cues. If they lean in or seem relaxed, it's a good sign that they're comfortable with the current distance. If they lean back or step away, it's a signal that you want to give them a bit more space. Personal space is like a little unspoken agreement with others during interactions. Respecting it shows that you care about their comfort and boundaries. It's all about creating a positive and respectful environment where everyone feels comfortable. Tip number 13, listening skills. Listening skills are the art of tuning in and understanding what others say. Have you ever talked with someone but could tell they were waiting for their turn to speak? It's not the best feeling, right? Well, that's where good listening skills come into play. Listening isn't just about hearing the words from someone's mouth. It's about being fully present and engaged in the conversation. When you're truly listening, you show the other person that their thoughts and feelings matter to you. So, how can you become a better listener? First things first, put away those distractions. I understand. We live in a busy world, but when talking to someone, give them your full attention. Put down that phone, step away from the computer, and focus on what they're saying. And here's a little secret. It's not just about their words. Pay attention to their tone of voice and body language too. Those non-verbal cues can sometimes speak louder than words. You might notice a change in their tone when they're excited or a slump in their shoulders when feeling down. Active listening is like a superpower in communication. Tip number 14, speech fillers and pauses. Speech fillers and pauses are those little ums, ahs, and moments of silence during a conversation. We all do it from time to time, and it's normal. But guess what? These seemingly insignificant things can give us valuable insights into what's happening in a person's mind. You see, speech fillers like, um, or, ah, uh, often pop up when we're trying to gather our thoughts or find the right words to express ourselves. It's like a little signal that our brain works behind the scenes. And you know what's interesting? The frequency of these fillers can tell us something about a person's confidence level or even their comfort in a particular topic. Let's say you're discussing something they're passionate about. They might not use as many fillers because they feel more at ease and confident about the subject. On the other hand, if they're discussing something they're unsure about or maybe a bit uncomfortable with, you might notice an increase in fillers. Now, let's talk about pauses, those little breaks in the conversation. Pauses can be revealing too. Sometimes, we pause to gather our thoughts, but other times, it could indicate hesitation or uncertainty. Paying attention to the length and timing of these pauses can give us clues about how someone feels or what they might be holding back. And here's the thing, we all have our unique speaking styles. 
Some people naturally use more fillers and longer pauses, while others are more fluent speakers. There's no right or wrong way to communicate, but knowing these little cues can help you read people better. The key is to be a good listener and observer during conversations. Tip number 15. Gestures and hand movements. Gestures and hand movements are like the colorful paintbrushes of non-verbal communication. You know how when people talk, they often use their hands to emphasize what they're saying. Those gestures are like an extra layer of expression that adds so much to the conversation. It's like their hands are helping to paint a clearer picture of what they're saying. And here's the fun part. Gestures can also show how someone feels emotionally. If they're nervous, they might fidget or play with their hands. On the other hand, confident people tend to make more deliberate and expansive gestures. The gestures and the direction of their movements can also be revealing. For instance, if someone's pointing their body away from you, it could signal that they're not fully engaged or interested in the conversation. So, pay attention to their hand movements the next time you chat. It can give you valuable clues about their emotions and level of engagement. Tip number 16. Proxemics and social distance. Proxemics and social distance are all about how close or far we like to be from others during interactions. You see, different cultures and individuals have their comfort zones regarding personal space. Some folks are cool with being up close and personal, while others prefer more breathing room. It's like an invisible bubble around us that defines how close we let others get. Now, here's the thing. Understanding proxemics can help us read people better. When someone stands close to you, it indicates a closer relationship or higher intimacy level. On the other hand, if they keep stepping back during a conversation, it might suggest they need some space or feel uncomfortable. Being aware of social distance is also super important in different settings. Tip number 17. Social context and environment. Our setting and situation can influence how we behave and express ourselves. It's like the environment sets the stage for our interactions. When you're at a party with friends, you might be more relaxed and playful, right? But you will likely be more composed and professional if you're in a formal business meeting. The people around us and our specific places can affect our behavior and emotions. For example, if we're with close friends or family, we might let our guard down and be more open about our feelings. But we might be more cautious and reserved in a room full of strangers. As we read people, we need to be aware of these social cues and adapt our approach accordingly. How we interpret someone's body language or tone of voice might differ depending on the social context. What might seem assertive in one setting could be seen as aggressive in another. Tip number 18. Congruence in communication. Congruence in communication is all about ensuring that what someone says matches how they say it and what their body language tells us. When someone's words, tone of voice, and body language are all in sync, it's like a sign of sincerity. It's like they're being genuine with you. You feel like you can trust them because everything about their communication aligns. On the flip side, when there's incongruence, it's like a little red flag. Maybe they're saying one thing, but their body language sends a different message. Imagine this scenario. You're talking to someone, and they're saying they're fine, but their arms are crossed, and they are avoiding eye contact. It's like their body is telling you they're not fine, even though they're saying they are. Tip number 19. Intuition and gut feeling. Intuition and gut feeling are those instinctive nudges we often get in certain situations. That feeling when something just doesn't feel right, or maybe it feels like the perfect moment to take action. It's like this inner compass that guides us, even when we can't explain why. Our gut feeling is like a subtle whisper telling us to pay attention to something important. Our brain picks up on subtle cues that we might not consciously register, and it processes all that information to give us that gut feeling. So, it's like this superpower that can help us make quick decisions or sense when something might be off. But here's the thing. We often doubt our intuition because it's not something we can see or touch. Sometimes, our gut feeling picks up on subtle cues in someone's behavior or tone of voice that indicate something might be wrong. But when you combine it with other reading techniques we've talked about, it becomes a powerful tool in your arsenal. I hope you found these insights valuable and can now apply them in your daily interactions. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel Brain Bite Size for more informative content. Remember to hit the notification bell so you get all the updates. Thank you all for watching, and remember to embrace the power of understanding others.